Hi everyone! Thanks for visiting my channel. If you're new here, welcome. I'm so glad that you stopped by. I hope that you will consider subscribing, like, and share my videos, and follow me on social media. I will leave all the links in the description box below. So today we are going to be making, or I should say canning up, some delicious herb chicken. Now, if I'm honest, I am not, and neither is my family, a huge fan of canned meat. So I have to find ways to make it pretty. I know uh, canners all over the world like to can ugly chicken, but for me and my family, if it doesn't look um, appetizing in the jar, they're not going to eat it, and I'm not going to want to eat it either, either, even though I know that it's totally fine to eat. But I like for it to look pretty in my jar. So today we are going to attempt to make our chicken pretty. Uh, my friend Jenny in our canning group over on Facebook has inspired me to try my hand at um, canning up some chicken. I do need some on my shelf. It has been on my mind to do and I've been putting it off and then this past week she canned up a whole bunch of it and it looked really nice and I thought I need to give that a try and while I'm at it, I'm gonna make a video. So for those of you who are not huge fans of canning meat, this video is for you. I'm just gonna be canning up basic chicken, but I am gonna add some seasonings to it which are completely optional to make it herb chicken, but they will be dried herbs that would be appropriate for any dish. We're just, I'm just gonna to try to enhance the flavor of the chicken. So what we need to do is we're going to start by par cooking our chicken. I'm going to be roasting mine in the oven. I have my oven preheating on 425 degrees. And then what I did, and I'm going to be canning chicken breasts. You can do chicken breasts, you can do thighs, you can do whatever you prefer. Um, but I'm going to be doing breasts. So what I've done is I've just trimmed up my breast. I remove anything that doesn't look like it would be something that I'd want to eat, trim off any extra skin, any extra fat. There tends to be a little spot in the breast that can be kind of grizzly. I cut that out. And then I chunk my chicken into one to two inch chunks, about like that. And that's where I am right now. So I've just put, I have eight pounds of chicken. I am shooting for um, eight pints. That's what will fit in my canner nicely. I'm not gonna can in quarts because it's just my husband and I most of the time. So a quart of chicken is gonna be too much for us. So I'm just gonna can in pints. So I'm shooting for eight pints. I've got about eight pounds of chicken. Jenny said she had 20 pounds of chicken, I believe is what she processed and she got about 10 quarts. So I'm using her math to end up with eight pints, hopefully we will be close. So anyway, I don't have any seasoning on it right now. It's just my chicken. It's in my nice big roasting pan that I use for doing my turkey each year. And I'm gonna go ahead and pop that into the oven and we're gonna roast it until, she says 90% done. The guidelines on the National Center for Home Food Preservation say until it's two thirds done. So between 80 and 90% cooked. We don't really wanna cook it all the way through because it is gonna to continue to cook under pressure in our jars and we don't want to overcook it. We don't wanna make our chicken dry, but we do want to par cook it. Even the guidelines state that you'll get better results if you hot pack and par cook your meat. So that is why we are going that route. Many recipes, especially by Ball, um, they've tried to simplify the process and they do allow for raw packing. And the guideline state is totally fine to raw pack, but for the best result, par cooking is a really a good idea. And I have found that to be true in the last several recipes I've done for you guys that include chicken. I did par cook my chicken, like in the chicken tortilla soup and in the pot pie filling that we did, I par cooked that chicken and I have to tell you that it was far better than any of the recipes that I've done using raw chicken. So that's just my take on it. That's where we're going with this today. So anyway, I'm gonna take my chicken, pop it in the oven on 425 degrees for about an hour till about 80 to 90% cooked through, and then we're going to jar it up. So while that's happening, I'm gonna go ahead and get my stock ready. I'm gonna be canning mine in stock. You can use better than bullion. Many people enjoy better than bullion. So whatever you prefer, you can get that ready while that's happening and get your canner ready as well. This is low acid food. We must pressure can it. So no water bath canning for chicken. So let's get started. 
Okay guys, I baked my chicken for about 45 minutes. How long you need to bake it is gonna depend on how much chicken you have, of course, and how, see mine is all spread out so it's cooking faster than if you had your pieces overlapping. But one of the things I wanted to point out, see all that yucky white stuff? <laughs> It, that is fat from the chicken and that is what looks ugly in our jars so we are going to get rid of that this is a step that's totally optional um, but i am going to rinse it under hot water and um, then drain it and hopefully get rid of some of that ugly white stuff that doesn't look so appealing in our jars but like i said that's totally optional also i wanted to mention that you do not have to roast it as i have you can also poach it it's up to you how you want to par cook it so it's just really easy to do it in the oven so I am going to rinse and drain my chicken and get my stock hot, get water in my canner going, and then we'll be ready to start the canning process. Okay guys, we are all set for canning. You saw me, I rinsed my chicken. My broth, or I, actually I'm using stock. You can use stock broth. You can technically use water, but I highly recommend stock or broth that will give your chicken a much better flavor. Um, I'm going to, so I'm using chicken stock and then for our herbs, I'm going to be using a quarter of a teaspoon of herbs de Provence and a quarter of a teaspoon of lemon pepper. Both of those just bring out the flavor of the chicken. They would be neutral enough flavors to use in any chicken dish that you choose. So that's what I chose, but you could certainly use any dried spices your heart desires. Just make sure that, um, just make sure you're not using too much and make sure that you're not using something that's going to be overpowering. Um, I had considered trying tarragon, but that flavor can be kind of um, overpowering and it can it's not very neutral for adding to certain dishes. It does complement chicken well, but it wouldn't be good for some chicken dishes. But you could also flavor use spices that would flavor um, your chicken towards Mexican flavors or Italian. So you can kind of mix and match however you want to. Like I said, I'm just trying to do a pretty neutral profile of herbed chicken that would work well in just about any dish. I'm also going to be adding a half of a teaspoon of canning salt. The salt is up to you. I think salt is nice in canning. It adds, helps to add more flavor, but if you prefer to can without salt, that's totally fine. All of the herbs are optional, so you pick and choose what you like and leave out what you don't. So, Okay guys, I failed to mention I do have my canning rack in my canner and I have three inches of simmering water in the bottom of my canner. Make sure that you do what is appropriate for the canner that you are using. Make sure you follow your manufacturer's guidelines. Also, we do not need to pre-sterilize jars and lids as long as we are gonna be canning for 10 minutes or more, and we are. So I just washed my lids, set those aside, and I have my, I washed my jars, and I'm keeping them hot in a sink full of hot water. I'm gonna be canning in pints, but you can also can this in quarts. Okay guys, here we go. We're gonna start by adding our chicken chunks. And we want to add our chicken chunks to one inch headspace. And I still have a little bit of the white snow as it's referred to on my chicken chunks, but I was able to rinse off most of it. So it just depends on how much effort you wanna put into rinsing it, but I got quite a bit of it off. Okay, so there's my chicken to one inch headspace. So now I'm gonna go ahead and add my herbs. I'm going to start with a half of a teaspoon of salt, and I'm doing a scant half of a teaspoon. If you're doing quarts, you can do a full teaspoon. And then I'm just going to add a quarter of a teaspoon of the lemon pepper. Oops. And the herbs de Provence. And then I'm going to ladle in my broth stock, whichever you're using. And we want to maintain the one inch head space. Now 
Now you wanna take a debubbling tool, a chopstick or plastic butter knife, and we're gonna release air bubbles, which also may change our head space. So I poke around my jar really well. And you wanna make sure that your chicken is covered with stock. So as you're debubbling, your pieces might rearrange themselves. Okay, I did end up taking out one of the pieces from this jar. It was just coming up too high once I added my stock. So once you're happy with your headspace and have your chicken pieces arranged the way that you want them, take a paper towel dipped in white vinegar and we're gonna clean our rims really well so nothing interferes with a good seal. We're going to add our lids and then add your rings to fingertip tight. And in the canner they go. See how pretty? Okay guys, I got eight pint jars. I had a few pieces of chicken left and a little bit of stock. So I had roughly eight pounds of chicken and roughly two quarts of stock and that filled eight pint jars. So that's a, a good gauge to help you figure out how much chicken you want to can of. But my canner is full, so I'm happy. Um, so what I do now is I take the rest of the vinegar that was in my bowl and put it in my canning water. For those of you who don't know, that just helps to keep your jars nice and clean during the canning process so minerals that are in our water don't collect on the outside of the jars. So now we want to put on our lid. Uh, for the all-american canner you line up the arrow with the notch and then we are going to tighten our thumb screws two at a time opposites you want to make sure you have roughly the same amount of space all the way around and then we are going to crank up our heat to a medium high to high to get everything up to temperature once we see steam coming out of our vent we want to vent for 10 minutes and you'll see a steady stream of steam for 10 minutes and then we can add our weight. When we get there, I'll bring you back. Okay guys, I've been venting for 10 minutes. Had a nice steady stream of steam. You can even hear it coming out. So now we are ready to add our weight. About your weight, that is dependent, which PSI you use is dependent on your altitude. I'm below a thousand feet, so I am gonna be canning at 10 pounds of pressure. So make sure you know your altitude and make sure you use the appropriate PSI. I'm gonna go ahead and add my weight. Okay guys, my weight has started to jiggle. That means we are up to pressure. So I'm gonna set my timer for 75 minutes. Now, we do not want to leave our heat on high or medium high throughout the canning process. We want to adjust our heat so that the weight rocks one to three, one to four times a minute for my canner. If you have a different canner with a different set of instructions, make sure you follow whatever instructions come with your canner for how many times your weight should rock. If you have a dial gauge canner, you're gonna be canning at 11 pounds of pressure for under 1,000 feet. If you are at a different altitude, you will have to determine what that is when you look up your altitude. Um, and I will leave an altitude adjustment chart in the description box below. Anyway, you wanna make sure you adjust your heat. This is rocking too fast. So we wanna adjust our heat just to maintain 11 pounds of pressure or just to maintain rocking one to three, one to four times a minute. Okay guys, we are all done. Once my time was up, I turned the heat off, let my canner return to zero pressure naturally, and then uh, removed the weight, let my jar sit for 10 minutes or so, and now here they are. And there is our pretty herbed chicken. Um, I think it looks better than ugly chicken um there's still a little bit of snow i didn't really get in there and really um rinse each piece so i still have a little bit of snow in my jars but i think it looks better than not rinsing and certainly pre-cooking it i think helps as well so i'm very happy with that to me that looks appetizing 
So thanks for coming along with me today, guys. I hope that this video was helpful to you. You can let me know your thoughts in the comment section. Do you think that par cooking the chicken was helpful? Um, do you think rinsing it was helpful? Let me know your thoughts. I definitely like this better than what I have done in the past. So I'm happy to have this on my shelf. I'm sure my family will agree. And you can let me know your thoughts in the comment section. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share, and I will see you next time. Have a great day.